Taekwondo, anyone? <laughs> this is Python's Paradise. This is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. the Python Hyena. And folks, I have a return guest. I have her on because we just love her so much. <laughs> yes. We've had her on. This is her third time solo. We've had her on with her mom, Paulette Rubenstein. And now she's on with a bird. <laughs> Folks, I give you 16 Candles actress, Leanne Curtis. How do you do, Leanne? <laughs> I was waving my antenna at everyone. In case I go reference Girlfriend from Hell as well. <laughs> there you go. Who's your bird friend? Listen, I don't cheat on my husband. Oh, bird friend. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. How about you said boyfriend? Um, Diva Bird. Diva Bird is one of my three African gray parrots. Yeah. She happens to be the oldest one. And the story on Diva is that <laughs> I'm just remembering when I first got her. I won't go into that. But um, after I had my first child, it was all good. Then I had my second child. Mind you, they're 31 and 29 now. Um, anyway, so this one was not getting as much attention as she should. And the makeup lady from Rock and Roll High School Forever was in love with this bird. And every time she'd come over, the bird was very responsive to her. So she said, would you consider selling me your bird? And I thought, that's so weird. <laughs> you know, my husband can't stand her. She's not getting my attention. I'm stressed out. Maybe it's better for the bird. So I let the bird go. And I'm not kidding you. I lost track of Karen. She got married. She went off. And then she got, I think she, it doesn't matter. Fast forward 17 years. She's got uh, a kid who's like six or seven at the time, maybe. I reconnect with her because my husband like can find people for me with Westlaw. Thank you. <laughs> um, and I just really had this need to find this woman. I don't know what that is. Call it intuition is what that is. It's just it was time. We can talk about intuition later because that's more interesting to me than this story. Anyway, um, Diva was still with Karen. So when I found Karen and she told me Diva was still there, I burst into tears and told her that I had a bunch of parakeets and then I got another African gray and la, 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 la. And within a few weeks, she said, how would you feel about buying the parrot back? Because I'm a single mom, I'm really stressed out. I, I don't have enough fun. And she started like that. I was like, hmm, wonder where I heard this before. And turnabout is fair play. So off we went. And I, I, I remember carrying the birdcage down her stair. Oh my God. Do you remember this? When you came back home with me? Yeah, you remember that? I know, I know, I know. But when I first went to Karen's house and the bird and I saw each other, she started doing the little regurgitation thing. And then I burst into tears again, like, holy shit, this bird remembers me. That is so weird and so cool. So, hi, hi, I know, I know. I know, I love you too. So we were <laughs> reunited and it felt so good. That's I vomit for you too. No, I don't think you would enjoy it if I vomited for you. That wouldn't taste good. So we're not doing that. Not at least not in public. <laughs> don't tell hyena python. <laughs> I got a kitty here somewhere. He's I think he's asleep. <laughs> Hey, do we know what a kitty says? Where's the kitty? Is there a kitty here? There's no kitty here, is there right now? I know, but if she saw your kitty, she might meow. <laughs> or if I held a treat in front of her, she might meow. That's that's her stupid pet trick, like seeing all. Oh, he might get up and go come come around here somewhere. <laughs> I have breakfast uh, breakfast club T-shirt, and I'm like, I didn't have a sixteen candles T-shirt. And I'm, I'm surprised you weren't in the breakfast club because I think detention would be where you be. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> so I wore this. This is this is close to you. 
I could, I like putting my hair like that. Actually, it looks a little, I, I like that. And, and honestly, uh, I, I, I did a caricature of this attorney that's making me really angry. Yeah. I think he's churning. And I think he's just being an asshole and churning and churning the other side. Like, yeah. Yeah. The defendant. I'm, I'm the plaintiff. He's the defendant. And he's just fucking around. And my attorneys are just so, I'm sorry. They're just so dumb. So I had to call my friend and uh, he's like Ray Donovan, but without the guns and drugs. Um, <laughs> yeah. He did that in the eighties, but he doesn't do that anymore because he's tired of that. So he's, he's a kinder, gentler, calmer individual, but has a knack for uh, stating the obvious and making people understand what he's talking about. So we're, we're expanding the case. You know, uh, I can't really talk about what it is, but I can just talk about the buffoonery and, and, you know, that little outfit on that girl. That's what, uh, wait, here, here, because nobody knows what it's in reference to. I'll just show you. This is my caricature. My two attorneys on the outside, one's on a choke chain, and the one in the middle is just churning away and making money. So this is, you know, this is some of Leanne's art. I'm not, <laughs> I am not nice. She likes Iron Man competition. So I made her have an eight pack. I made this guy like with the goofy look on his face, you know, with the spews coming out from under the desk where his hand is clearly doing something. She's on the choke chain and this guy's just making butter, making cheddar in the middle. And that's my, that's, that's the scenario of my legal life. And then we have to the rescue. This is my Ray Donovan. <laughs> His name super, to be yeah. super, super dick. P -O -A. That's, right. that's right. That's who's now taken over because I can't take it anymore. I need to just pay attention to me and look in the mirror and, and tell myself how beautiful I am while these mm -hmm. heads run around like jackasses and behave like attorneys and just, you know, keep turning like tops and doing this. So we have super dick, enter super dick and um, Leanne will be happy soon, I think, or at least it'll be in the rear view soon because super dick, AKA Captain Obvious is gonna go fix it now. Thank you. Next. Well, I was arranging my Blu-rays today because I'm I, I'm I'm in this apartment longer than I should be. So, and uh, wanted to bring this out. Sixteen candles that you're in. Should I go quickly get my hair fixed? No. I look like that again. It was a look. Kathy Swanson. She made this and her. No, I'm, why am I doing a German accent? She was actually Swedish. Kathy Swanson and her son Gunnar, blonde guy. Gunnar Swanson. I wonder if we could find Gunnar. That could be like one of my weird videos. On I actually on think your hair looks nicer now. Well, it's super long because like when you move into a self-created monastery slash uh, a private nursing home for somebody, <laughs> like tears, you know, you're lucky you got a little lipstick, but like, I don't wear makeup. I don't go to the like uh, hair, what hair, what hair, 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 beauty parlor. Don't understand. What is that? Just let your mom do your hair. No, <laughs> okay. my bird actually does some up things to my hair. She'll like <laughs> the little green one. She'll get on top. And then she'll start picking. And next thing you know, I have this, like, I need to put peanut butter in there or I have to shave my head or like, just start crying. Excuse me, this is the pain. The pain, like Dr. Smith. <laughs> oh, the pain, oh. Yeah, it's like that, it hurts. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's you and your mom and your bird? Yes, sir. And I, I really, I've become very reclusive. I don't go out. <laughs> like I'm on my last can of uh, coffee beans and I happen to like the Trader Joe's medium roast Arabica beans. Um, I just looked up into the left because I saw a news flash that because of floods or something that the coffee bean... Uh, 
production has so exactly it like, <laughs> see she's good for sound effects this one she's older and she's chill and she's not as neurotic as the others anyway so yeah so i only go out if i have to go to trader joe's um because everything else like jeff bezos bleh, takes care of polarization i love you i hate you i love you i hate you for so many reasons i love you i hate you that was my jeff bezos song <laughs> I love it and hate it. And there we are in a whole complete circle of polarization, which is what this planet is, she said, as the beam went straight up out of her head. Well, I remember the last time I had you on, I had you on with your mom, and uh, that was a blast. <laughs> Talk yeah. about uh, being with your mom during COVID 19. It's been very interesting. Um, <laughs> Because, like, no, see, I don't see things the same way other people do. I never have, like, not in childhood, not in adulthood. And I noticed that, like, I really, um, only now in two years of not talking to more than a handful of people on a steady basis and just being with my mom, it's really been kind of a very deep, self-realization self-understanding understanding more of consciousness as much as any one human being can encompass such an incredibly huge concept um my head really literally feels like it's expanding and my eyes just got poppy because i really when i start thinking about this stuff i feel like all of the universe's information is like right there for any of us and it just is if we like turn away from mainstream so it's really been an exercise in turning away from mainstream like the only tv i was watching for a while was the gaia network and um i started listening to audio books but not you know uh grisham novels and not um nancy drew and not like uh you know, the, the, the New York Times bestsellers, but I'm listening to things like revisiting Seth Speaks, like the whole Seth series, um, one of which is up on YouTube until it gets yanked down, but really exploring higher aspects of self. Um, so I've really become what some refer to as woo woo and lunatic fringe. Um, and it's kind of interesting how it all unfolded. And I feel like I'm just so at the beginning of this ride because if, if there's been life for literally billions of years on this planet, how long have thinking people with free will existed on this planet? Not that long. So yeah. it's just, it's, it's been kind of a trip. So that coupled with starting to take yoga and learning to meditate, I meditate every single morning. I try to get more in during the day. Sometimes meditation comes in the form of doing dishes and allowing notions, I'll call them, which are very subtle to sort of ruminate in the back of my head. Like I think about just very existential things um, because it feels satisfying and it feels more comforting to me on so many levels than thinking about like, um, Oh, I don't know. What did the president do and say today? How many people are vaccinated? How many COVID cases are there? Are we going to have to have passports for COVID? Like, I, I don't, whatever. It's going to do what it's going to do. It does what it does. It doesn't do what it doesn't do. I don't need to be concerned with anything, but feeling satisfied in every right the second. Like, right the second is all I have. Like, and that was just words, like, and an intellectual understanding. But right now, I just feel like right now, like, what's wrong? Nothing. So what's the problem? There is none. So now I can think about, like, this morning, as I heard my mom, and I'll get into being with my mom in a minute, she woke up and she was very lucid for a second. And then she started coming, too, which allowed her to start trying to think. And because her subconscious patterns of thinking include 
being hyper aware and looking to see if anything's wrong. That way, if there's something wrong, then she, she can validate why she feels scared all the time, which is really nothing she understands, but it's so deep seated, you know? So within her dementia, instead of like repeating, you know, I'm so grateful, life is so beautiful, if she ever does say something like that, it's an intellectual overlay on a deep-seated fear that she's trying to calm down by saying words that she thinks she's supposed to say as opposed to actually feeling joyful, grateful, and calm. So it's this weird like obsession with the physical reality to the point where The reality of consciousness and the layers of being that exist in every human from the first breath we take to the last breath we exhale right is has been kind of um put to the side because if that is actually acknowledged then we come full circle to i cause my experience 100 percent like I'm the star, I'm the writer, I'm the editor, I'm the producer. Life is something that I have created. And my experience is something that comes to me as a result of my thoughts, my feelings, my state of being, and that field of possibility that has everything in it that responds to us when our focused attention is on something. And it either comes in the form of a self-fulfilling prophecy or what is called by society, I reached my goal. Either way, it's a, a manifestation of experience. And from the first idea, what somebody called Abraham Hicks refers to as rockets of desire and the actual physical manifestation thereof, there's a gap. And sometimes it can be closed instantly with the realization and the knowing. And sometimes there needs to be the experience of human being which includes buying into the ideas of anxiety, depression, and the lower vibrating ideas, concepts. Because it all starts with what you're thinking, like a thought, I'm scared about what's gonna happen tomorrow. Like you're not scared before you think that, you think that and then you get scared. So what are you thinking? And then we have the human called Joe Dispenza, who he, refers to having 60 to 70,000 thoughts in a day. But we're so busy in the physical and I have to have my breakfast and I have to make my cup of coffee and I have to, the story of I have to take care of the container in my mom when she's drifting and the container needs to be fed and the birds and the story of Leanne, my husband's far away. All this is happening. It's all the experience. However, right now, what I think and feel and how I choose to perceive what is in the next right now. It's the idea of right now. And if the idea of, again, a full circle back to everything's okay right now, then even like if you're about to get your head blown off, sure, does your human being experience anxiety and that thrill and then the absolute release back into the field of possibility where we all come from in the first, like every thought that's ever been thought is out there. And we have access to that naturally. Again, we're so focused on, I have to have the latest iPhone. Ooh, I'm a little jolly. Should I get a little, like, what if I had like two pinchy things when I do this, then, then I'll look younger. Like the, it, it's 60 to 70,000 chaotic. Whereas if you could just little by little gather your self and identify with your higher self, which is connected to source, which is as long as you're breathing, you're connected. As long as you're focused on your breath, you're focused on the alignment. As long as you're focused on what's gonna to happen tomorrow, what am I gonna eat for lunch? Do you believe what she said about me? Oh my God, can you believe what the president just did? <gasps> what happened at the Capitol? Oh my God. Go back to what the alignment is. And it's like a giant deflector shield. Does it deny that that's happening? No. Are you in denial that that's happening? No, you've just detuned it so that you can be functional. You know? So with my mom, 
living in this situation in COVID, I've become very hyper aware of our multidimensional reality insofar as when my mom drifts in what doctors in this place call hallucinations and dementia, what's actually happening is that her focus is not on, hi Leanne, how are you doing? Her focus is like how you go to a store and try on different clothes. She's trying on different dimensions, different aspects of herself, talking about my favorite tenor and do you hear him singing? And I'd like to go back to New York. Where are you in the French countryside at the gentleman's house? Could you please tell? So I'm sure she is like when we dream and our consciousness literally leaves our container, but comes back, she's trying on shoes. She's, try, she's trying to figure out what all this is in whatever way is left that all people who are close and in and times time whole other subject do because we're energy bodies we're vibrational we are energy before we're physical the physical body is a result of the idea of the i am that we create and our cells die and are born every time you breathe out there's a nanosecond where there's nothing and when you breathe in there's a nanosecond where there's nothing. So we're all dying literally with every breath, you know? So, so I, I feel like as society stops experiencing this place in such a dense, through physical eyes, ears, nose, throat, feeling there are so many other senses that we intrinsically have that have not been explored. So that's what it's been like for me. Intense growth, the privilege and honor of being able to observe somebody in their transition back into source and the ability to choose when feeling swept up in the humanness of feeling loss or buying into the concept of slight anxiety because in the unknown of when she'll disperse. That can be very stressful and it has caused me at times to be the little me, Leanne me, very snippy, looking at somebody who's dragging it out, who's completely unaware of what that could be doing to another human being if they're entrenched in that story. Thank God I have the ability to detune, detach, and observe that aspect of myself so that I don't have to feel it at inappropriate times and have it make me be focused on the wrong thing at the wrong time and then bumping into stuff, dropping plates, because there are multiple plates spinning, you know, but the ability to stay chill, you know. So being in COVID times has done nothing but allowed me to blossom into myself with no pressure from anyone or anything except me at whatever pace I choose to go. So it's resulted in visual art, a new YouTube channel, channeling light language, channeling higher aspects of myself, um, which is a little odd to some, but it's more helpful to the greater good of the greater amount of people out there than it is irksome. Plus it feels right. And it's just time. And that's what I'm doing. You know, my brother is right now taking care of uh, my mother and father. Uh, my father's got ALS. He's had it for since 2014. So he's had it longer than the expectancy. Uh, my mother has uh, Parkinson's. So 
my brother's kind of doing a lot of what you're doing right now. How long have you been caring for your mom? Okay. Well, I came for her birthday in November of 2018 mm -hmm. for a little while, preceded by um, her having taken a fall in 2017. Mm -hmm. She took a fall at the end of June, July, 2017. So by the time she was released from the hospital, I was flying here. I thought for just two weeks to help her. I ended up here for two months. I ended up, uh, if anybody's a Dickens fan out there, it was like walking into Mish Havisham's world. Everything stopped. The papers were piled everywhere. Like it was Ed McMahon's publisher house, publishing house, clearing house, applications mixed with some um, vital records from 1932 of my mother's annulment or whatever, 40, 40, whatever it was mixed with, hi, kitty. It's a Skittles. Skittles. Gee, and your bird's not there. <laughs> My bird was bored with this conversation. Was he? Yeah, she's probably ripping the carpet up someplace because they, they, they're- uh, It'll say hello to Leanne. Sweetie. <laughs> I love being able to see you. Plus, you know what else I was thinking? What? Um, that these interviews mm -hmm. are just gonna be so much better on these now. What's Can that? You, this, what? I'm sorry, what did you say? <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> You're funny. I know I don't think you were being funny, but I think that was funny. I said the sound quality on your interviews should be much better now on a Zoom than they were on, on phones. Right. You know what? Um, or it's funny. I've been going back to the movies since last July because we got the jump on COVID. I mean, we've had our issues with it, but... Um, but uh, I can't I haven't been back into the station since March 18th, 2020. So I went the rest, I was, I was lucky. I had about 150 interviews in my backlog that I, I hadn't put up on my YouTube because I put a new one up about every five days. So that was smart. My former station manager, before she retired, she told me, don't put interviews up as you do them save some for a rainy day yes that's COVID. Of, COVID turned out to be the rainy day dude i'm telling you that's part of my hesitancy with riding the frequency people kept saying well you keep talking about this mm -hmm. and I kept telling them i don't feel like i'm ready because i don't have enough information i don't feel comfortable yet well I, by come like i work i work as a cleaner and mostly I work back shift, so I usually don't work around people very often. But um, but that's what I do for money. I do this because I enjoy it, you know. But right. but um, it makes you feel good. I think that's the whole point of being in this place is understanding how to get past all the weird, crappy stuff and not focus on it. And but here's another thing too: is that. Um, I said that my brother's my tech guy and um, he usually gets all my stuff arranged and ready to put up and upload and stuff. And, and um, I told him, actually I had one of my other interview guests told me that if she can do zoom, I can do zoom. And I realized, you know what? I can't go another year without doing my interviews. I had about 30 people waiting for me and um I don't, I'm hoping they'll come back, go come on my show. Listen, you know what I always say? The people, the things that you create for yourself in experience are like, it's all lessons, you know? So if they don't come back, then there's a lesson in that. If they do come back, then there's a lesson in that. So just sort of pay attention to the subtle lesson flow in everything, mm -hmm. you know? and and try not to like the less sense it makes sometimes the better and, and don't don't sweat like making sense out of anything like the people who are supposed to 
Zuma, Zuma, Zoom with you will like no problem mm -hmm. and you're good. And I'm sure all of them will. So oh, I, wouldn't, yeah. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like think about it too much. I would just know that they're coming and, and just start setting them up, set them up, set them up. Set them Actually, up. they, uh, the responses I've got, they've been, they are pretty understanding. They get it, you know, <laughs> well, of course, you know, you know? like I, I'll tell you, I, I'm more, um, sometimes what seems not very empathetic or sympathetic, but really more direct than people would like. And that's also part of what living here with my mom um, during COVID has allowed me to be more comfortable in just direct communication that's less emotional. Um, you know, and like I said, I was here like eight weeks in 2017. Then I went home um then i came back then i made my daughter stay here for like six weeks then i came back to pick her up then i went back to la then i came back in may for a couple weeks then i left then i came back in i want to say no i didn't come back till november for her birthday then i came back again because there seemed to be a little bit of slippage with cog cognition um I came back again at the end of November, 2018. And she said, I think I'm going to be alone for Christmas. And I thought, oh, so I called my husband thinking um, if this is her last Christmas, I don't want to like miss like that. That's just, that did not sit okay with me. So I called my husband to see how he felt. And before I even had a chance to say anything, because he's all about happy wife, happy life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The first thing out of his mouth was, I'm not living with the person who didn't spend her mother's last Christmas with her. If you come home, just no, do not come home. I'm ordering you. I've never ordered you in our marriage to do anything. Um, do not come home for Christmas, please and thank you. I'll be fine. And I thought, mm, okay. Like that character, that teacher character, in South Park, okay, okay. Okay. He sings a song about profanity. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> anyway, so, so yeah. Uh, oh my God. Now I have to go look that up. The seagull song. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Never mind. So yeah. You're, so, you're, so your husband. I've, I've been here since I went home for two weeks in January to go play Nam with my daughter, then I extended it a week. And then I came back here February 7th, 2019. I had or two, and then we had a lint fire. And then there were no roommates after November 2019. And I've been strictly alone with her one on one since November 2019. No help. And then when COVID happened, I just said, nobody in or out bye and then i told the roommate you work in school with kids no bye find a different place to live i'm in a bubble now i'll see ya see ya after covid but there's no such thing so i'll see you when i see ya and i'm just happy in my bubble by myself with my mom and as um kind of unhinged as that may sound to some i feel like i've never been more stable in this Leanne experience. Talk, talk about your husband. He sounds like a very understanding guy. Is he still in LA? He is still in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, and he's caring for our six pound Yorkie who has been experiencing some health issues and the 13 year old cat, 14 year old cat. And um, uh, two cages of parakeets, one of older parakeets, one of younger parakeets, two of which were doing the bump in the ugly. <laughs> Three baby parakeets cooking in a little food bowl. She laid eggs in a food bowl. Three of them hatched and we've got three hatchlings back in Los Angeles. So as my mom is fading out, we've got these hatchlings coming in, <laughs> which is just, you know, it's the universe. It's, it's like that pool of possibility and source just reminding that everything breathes in and breathes out and there's a time for everything to come and there's some time to go and it's all okay. 
it's okay. No such thing as death. It's ice cubes and water and rain and clouds and steam. It's all the same thing. So consciousness takes several different forms. Sometimes it occupies a container. I'm not my body. So when I say, ow, ow, I hurt myself. Really, is that accurate? And this is where I drive my husband crazy. Speaking of my husband, he's like, does every conversation have to be like that? I'm so sorry, Tim, but I always do impersonations. Just call me Rich Little, Marilyn, Marilyn, what's her name? Marilyn Michaels. <laughs> <laughs> my heroes. Like that, for me, that's channeling. If people can just like take on the personality of others and go in and out of character that fast, what's different from channeling beings to doing that or to being a medium? It's all the same thing. Like, I feel like actors and creative people have kind of a, an edge on, I'm so sorry, like the more muggle people who, if you said, you know, your energy and your vibratory energy before your physical body would look at you like, huh? Ooh, what are you talking about? Like I plug myself into a wall? Like, what are you talking about? They wouldn't understand what the fuck I'm talking about. But that's it. That's part of like raising the vibration on the planet. I'm sure you're familiar with that. You've been hearing that a lot. <laughs> There's a reason. There's a reason. So your your mom's going to be turning, would you say 98 this year? Yeah, November 7th. If, oh, if wow. If her container lasts that long, she will be turning 98 on November 7th. God bless her. Wow. Yeah, she was a delight to have on here, you know. Um, and you say you said she's watching Marx Brothers movies right now. Yes, she loves Groucho. And sometimes at three or four in the morning, I have a baby monitor because I need to listen. Because if she wakes up and needs to go, like I need to get her body out of her bed. I mean, that's a whole thing. The bed goes up. I turn her around on her little pad. I pull the pad toward the edge of the bed. She does that and I get my hand behind her. I pull her up, get her hands around my neck, pick her up, do a three, no, a quarter turn and sling her over my shoulder. Then sort of, yeah, like I squat and she goes over my shoulder or over my arm and puts her hands on the night table. It sounds precarious, but we've got it down. Then I'll pull down her nappies. Then I'll get her on the toilet. Then she does her business. Then I was using the walker to get her back up, but she does this weird thing now. She'll get on her tippy toes and push the walker forward, which puts the back legs up, uh -huh. wheels, and it went down and she almost went down, but I was able to super lean on. So the wheels came off of that two days ago. So like as she changes, I chose that word very, very carefully. As she changes, I adapt and adapt whatever I have here to suit the need. It's so simple. You know, no need to go get into a spiral of I'm so sad, this is devastating because then I'm not thinking clearly to be able to just go, oh, well, I guess it's time to take the wheels off of that. That way, if she does rock it forward, it's not going to slip on the carpet. It just won't like common sense you know i like groucho marx too <laughs> right. so you know that's her whole thing about when he dances so when when uh sometimes <laughs> sometimes when she's over the walker getting her back off and onto the bed and i say stand up tall she's like i can't and i'll say why she said because i'm like i'm being groucho you know how you walk like that <laughs> i'm like yeah, either that or Mick Jagger. You have fun with that. So sometimes we can raise the vibration around her dread disease and how she sees things. And I always am pleased to be able to observe somebody even in late stages of being here, shift their vibration just even a little bit you know, just even a little bit. Like that way they remember who they are for just a second. 
you're a creator. You just created something happy. God bless you. That you've watched in a night at the opera now. Is that her favorite Marx Brothers film? Yeah. I like Duck Soup the best. You like Duck Soup? Like yeah. Duck Soup, like a night at the a day at the circus, a night at the yeah. I like that one because he sings Lydia in that one, in the circus one. And then mm -hmm. and then she likes um a night in Casablanca, which is a little mm -hmm. dark because there's a murder that has to be solved, which but she used to love whodunits, like um, but <laughs> Her favorite is when Harpo is like holding up the building and the cop is like, what are you doing? Holding up the building? What do you think he's going to fall down? Come on, let's go. And he yanks him and the whole building falls down. She howls every time. <laughs> every time. She loves that. Loves that. Oh, it's great stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love the Marx Brothers. That was early in the uh, talking pictures as well, Marx Brothers. They did Animal Crackers as well. It's another one they did. Oh, good. I should look for that one. Thank you. Like, yeah. I'm able to buy them on Amazon Prime for her. So, mm -hmm. like, theoretically, unless Jeff Bezos's platform goes nutsy cuckoo and I lose all of my digital whatever, um, I have those movies. Which is fine, because the Marx Brothers will always remind me of Princess Paulette. There you go. Do you show her this one? God. She'd have nightmares. <laughs> My dear, what did you do to your hair? I got to admit, you know, I like your hair now. You actually look younger. Really? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I kid you not. Well, I guess I will say thank you. Yeah. I, I think it looks great. I think your hair looks fantastic. Get to a dog and a snake to say something like that. Huh? I said, leave it to a dog and a snake to say something like that. I'm not even sure if a hyena classifies as a dog. <laughs> it's not in a dog family. It doesn't have its own family. Now you know, I have to Google stuff. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> All I know is they got the strongest jaw pressure of any mammal. Well, that sounds like a pit bull. So like maybe a pit bull is part hyena. <laughs> but uh, no, no, I enjoyed this movie. This I got two different versions of this too. I got one that's got uh, the cardboard. Um, it's over there in one of my boxes. It's got the booklet with it and stuff. And I guess they got a new Criterion release for it as well. That looks really nice. But oh, good. maybe more money energy for Leanne Curtis. I like yeah. Do you get my uh, residuals from this? Every quarter, there's a little something from Benny and June, and that one are the two. Um, I guess cash cows. You know. Then there's you know I, I dubbed like one line for Herbert, Herb Ross, mm -hmm. Herbie Nijinsky, but he was a scary fucker. Sorry. I said it. That's a no good. You could, you could swear on here. Oh, well, I stopped myself twice because sometimes I'm a lady and then there are the other times. Oh. Anyway. So yeah, Herb Ross, scary motherfucker. Mm -hmm. like, so I'm like, I don't know, 15 years old and there's some kids, something and the sound is fucked up. So they need somebody to just dub like two words a lot. So sometimes I'll get like one penny from the movie Nijinsky. So that's like probably my least, my least paying and the highest are 16 candles and, and Benny and June. There you go. I love 16 candles. I love um, 80s teen comedies, you know. And I like them, well, <laughs> ones from the 70s as well. I love Rock and Roll High School, for example. But um, have you ever uh, worshipped an appliance? No. <laughs> an appliance? <laughs> I don't know, man. Until you've done a refrigerator dance. like. No, I haven't done that. Well, About the closest yeah. thing I've seen to anything like that was whatever they were doing in uh, nine and a half weeks. <laughs> whatever that was. Rock and roll high school forever. We did a refrigerator dance. 
to the song, I, 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 I love you very much. I, 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 I think you're grand. Do, 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 do. I think I was actually even doing that move. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, now I'm dizzy. I need more water. Let's no, I do. More water. What? I do like Super Bad. That was a recent teen comedy. I do like that one. Remember if I, you know, I've probably seen it like as it was droning in the background. Yeah. But um, yeah, I still get physical media. I don't, uh, I like to own my movies. <laughs> Some people, they just, I don't know, they got their computer just full of movies and I don't know. Yeah, no, that's, I would need an extra hard drive for that if I did it that way. I, like, I still have videos and DVDs in storage back in LA. Like, and I think, I wonder if I ever have grandchildren, if I'll poison them with the same idiocy that I poisoned my children, like all those Disney movies, <laughs> like, or if there'll be some kind of um, other option that allows them to stay connected to other things that's just as entertaining. I have actually noticed, honestly, um, that I leave like Nick Jr. on and Nickelodeon HD on because I think my parents like SpongeBob. <laughs> I, think I think they like SpongeBob. One of them, a couple of them do that. So, okay, so they like SpongeBob. But along with SpongeBob come a whole slew of other shows like, uh, oh, Paw Patrol. And there's another one, I don't know the title, but they're off in space. Sean um, the Sheep. But see, this is what I'm saying, is like all of these storylines now are more, there are more space exploration themed TV shows. Like, and people can say it's a trend, but I'll say it's slow drip disclosure because they don't know how to tell people what they already know about consciousness and the Monroe Institute. And I mean, I, I've been taking remote viewing. I took a remote viewing class for four weeks and then our group like continued. And it's amazing when somebody is just staring at uh, an image and the rest of the group has like uh, code like Y2H3-X4F7, right? And that's all we're given. And we just take a bunch of deep breaths and like whatever just comes to, whatever flies into my head, like just flies into my head. One time, a guy named Alan Steinfeld, he was teaching the class because he took some class with Lynn Buchanan, who's a big deal in that area. Um, but Alan had a blind target and it was like literally the life got sucked out of my solar plexus and I started crying and but it was like just this feeling like like somebody sucker punched me but here and it was just like oh oh I, I could barely breathe and I, I just was crying. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I feel like I'm, I'm crazy. And Alan's like, are you crying? What's going on? And then I explained, like, I can't catch my breath. It's like part of myself just got like extracted. Like, and I'm just like in disbelief and I, there's grief, disbelief there. I feel like people are watching. I feel like, like there's just like chaos and, and mass like emotion. And like, I don't know what is going on. And he's like, wow. Okay. Uh-huh. And then I was just like, all right, well then I'm just fucking nuts. Feeling not even anxious, just like stunned like beyond stunned stunned into some state of like hyper I, I like i can't even describe it like right now so everybody else took their turn and then i hear alan and he probably hates it because i do this too like, here comes marilyn michaels and rich little leanne yeah i think leanne won this round and he reveals the picture and it was Jesus on the cross. 
So everybody decided that like, I must have some kind of intuitively picked up the vibration or energy of either Mother Mary or Mary Matt, one of the Marys who would very much have felt like that at the atrocity of what had just like, and even right now, like the goosebumps are going up all over my body while I'm telling you this, like on my head, on my feet, inside, like goosebumps inside. So there's a resonation and everybody has access to all of this. Like I said, like it's the, it's the field of all potential where all ideas lie that have ever been thought that will ever be thought and there's no time, it's all now. So this idea of from beginning to end really is just part of like a bubble that we get into being humans from beginning to end. But like, I don't think there's such a thing as beginning and end. I think, I think it's just ongoing. Hang on. Sorry. This is sorry, Natalia. I hate to break oh. <laughs> What's your favorite movie that you've done? Do you have a favorite? I can say that the favorite movie that I've done has yet to be released or even <laughs> made. I just optioned a script called The Sound, written by a guy named Michael Lynn. Michael Lynn, you can look him up. He used to be a producer on um, uh, uh, E! Entertainment. He used to do the E! True Hollywood Stories. He was one of the two head producers. They, they had two of them that would alternate the A and the B because, you know, keeping up with us celebrities, you know, there's lots of research and it would give people at least two weeks to, instead of the one week stress like the lion chasing me and I'm a gazelle to get my deadlock like you know it's already bad enough in Hollywood they already run it like yeah running around scared like Duh. I don't like that vibe at all it's really hard to be creative with that kind of shit going on um so yeah so the movie the my favorite movie has yet to be made it's a wonderful script um and and I I fell in love with it probably like 30 years ago not even kidding you my son was probably, was, yeah, my son was a baby. My eldest child was probably in kindergarten, like five years old. And they are now, God, are they turning 32, 31, 32, 32. Oh my God. My eldest child is 32 years old. That is so weird. Huh. Time is weird, but I said that before. Now I'm just experiencing it from a different point of view. Anyway, like I said, like a diamond, everything has multiple facets. You can see the same thing from a billion different ways. Do you have a film that you regret doing? No. No? No, what's the one? Okay, like what? Uh, I think Girlfriend from Hell was probably the, I, I like that one. That was the most fun. <laughs> I really enjoyed myself on that one because I was just such I, I was very like possessed Maggie and we did it and like we had 18 days to do it and we did it in 17 so Dan came in under budget and, and under uh, under schedule which never happens especially on something that's only been allotted like 18 days <laughs> mm -hmm. three six day weeks you're done that's it that's all you get like and he did great he did great like I'm, I'm very grateful for the choices I've made, you know, I could have made others and, and I, I made all the perfect choices because here I am. Actually, I, I think um, it's great that you're not in the center of the whole Hollywood game because um, that can be, yeah. Well, yeah, when I hear- it's, when not I, about, it's not about being creative. It's about suits making deals. It's about moving money. It's about laundering money. It's about um, sending messages out that hit lots of people that keep them lulled into priorities that are mm -hmm. fucked up um, right down the line. You know, even when my daughter was listening to music, the lyrics were everybody's getting drunk, drunk, right? The boys are looking at my junk, junk. I mean, I love Kesha. It's very catchy, but it's very catchy and like sound vibration does something to your brain what you're listening to the vibration of the sound 
coupled with the lyrics that are going in, like, why do you think there's hemi-sync? Why do you think Bob Monroe, in his studies of out-of-body experiences, had to jiggle the fluid in his brain with 104 hertz here and 100 here, or the reverse, and whatever's going on in your brain, like it has to reckon with those two different signals and somehow meet in the middle. And when the middle is met, that's when you can pop out of your body. Like, and then you don't need the hemisync to do it. And everybody does it every night when you dream, like flying dreams, that's astral projecting. Like people who can control their dreams. It's people who are just less plugged into sight, sound, smell, touch, and taste. They're concentrated on other sensory that's in your DNA. Like, so if you think about that, take a step back, like you could actually go adventuring in your own consciousness and figure out what a human being is and how we create our experience or you can keep feeling shitty because they tell you to be scared of COVID. You have to get jabbed, like uh, don't bounce your checks. You better be responsible and keep telling that story that you're like indentured to somebody because they're your mom, your brother, you're this, you're the bullshit. That's a society story to make you locked into some bullshit freeway of more bullshit so that you can stay in chaos and fight with each other when really like there's an adventure in your own consciousness waiting for you. Everybody, everybody sing. <laughs> uh, bungalow Bill, who did you kill? Bungalow Bill, I killed my little self because it's an asshole. <laughs> That's who Bungalow Bill killed. Thank you, the Beatles. I want to get your opinion on what's going on now. This whole stupid cancel culture bullshit. What's that? <laughs> oh people are now going back and uh they're complaining about gum with the wind dr zeus uh, i guess peppy Le Pew got canceled because they could because he comes on to wit gropey, gropey la fuck, fuck with the little kitty when because she yeah and people are hashtag the me too pew yeah hashtag me too pew 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 everybody's in chaos everybody buys into crap everybody gets on a side and then they fight 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 yay yeah instead of turning inside going listen you know what came to me today again like those 60 to seventy thousand thoughts people think mm -hmm. most of them are like the wizard of oz it's the tornado and you get caught in the tornado of your own thoughts. And do you want to be like Dorothy, like getting thrown around and the yellow, then, then you have to find the yellow brick road. Then uh -huh. you have to take the long walk through all your fucking horse shit. Then you have to find some fucking fantastic place, which is probably like some parallel for your pineal gland, where you actually go and find out that the fantastic fantasy is really some shriveled up piece of shit asshole who's like pretending. And that all along you were in control of this whole dream. And there's no place like home, home, where's home, your consciousness. What the fuck, everybody? Hollywood already told you and you're not listening. Hollywood already told you and you're not listening. So if they want to cancel the message, that's okay. That does not make how human being functions not real or true they can tell whatever story and cancel whatever they want and take a side here and a side there they can continue behaving in a manner that makes people have to have conversations that that go into like taking a side about cancel culture that's okay they can cancel all they want that doesn't change that human beings think 70 to whatever thousand thoughts a day and that nobody's paying attention to their own thoughts. Now they're just paying attention to some idea that somebody threw like a stick in the spoke of a wheel that's supposed to be turning. Oh, now it's going to stop in cancel culture. And now we're going to bicker about that. Like, okay, have fun. I'm not, I'm not playing. I don't care. Go cancel yourselves out. I'm going to be here meditating and doing artwork and figuring out myself. Like, 
I, I really don't have time for cult craze, culture craze. Oh, I don't blame you. I stay out of it as well, you know, but it's just... People just always want to talk about it, though, and I think I think like I have I have a knack for just like dragging the conversation right back to consciousness. Oh, it's just like the COVID thing, you know. Like I know it's out there, but I haven't seen anybody that had it, has it. I've just kind of gone to work, come home, gone to work, come home. You know, right. you're not thinking, oh, I might catch COVID. Like no. these thoughts are not okay. But see, how? Do you think it's a coincidence that because you're not focused on I'm going to catch COVID if I go out like you're not thinking about that. So why would your body, your body. Thoughts are energetic signals, signals of energy that go out. If you think the same thing over and over, it's going to cause you to have a feeling and this thought through your vagus nerve goes into your gut and your mm -hmm. guts and your brain are connected. You have chakras. Those are all connected. They're all energy centers in and of their own right. They're basically their own energy brain centers. And when they're all aligned, like your body functions. When you, any human being starts thinking energy signals, like, probes, probes, probes over and over and over. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm angry. I'm angry. I'm scared. I'm scared. It's not going to cause anything but lack of ease, dis-ease. Like you, thoughts are things. They are things. Your body responds to your thoughts. Like you are not your body. I hurt my elbow. No. The, I banged my container and there's pain and disalignment in my container. So I'm going to align my thoughts with source and my container like will heal because that's what it does. Like if I heal faster, it's likely because I just vision myself like what it's like to be on the other end of whatever injury it is. So Leanne, you heal so fast. Well, yeah. I mean, I could say I'm a lizard and I grow parts back. Maybe it's not that excessive, <laughs> but like, I definitely heal quickly. Um, and that's probably part of a sub, like, I, and I keep saying it over and over. So I keep reinforcing how quickly I heal because I actually believe it. So I do. People are going to go around saying I heal so slowly. Like I'm always, bru I'm always getting bruises. Like I'm always like, I don't understand. Like there are also people who are probably like dragging around looking at what's wrong with everything outside them too. I don't know. Cause and effect, man. It's, it's a fun little thing to play with when you realize that there's no place like home. So COVID, you don't catch COVID because your thoughts and feelings are like the deflector shield that don't allow your body to allow the idea of COVID to come into your consciousness, your body will never reflect back COVID because you're not putting that in there. As above in your thoughts, so below in your body. What goes on here shows up in the container. I miss traveling though, I'll just say that. <laughs> That's going to come back. Yeah. And you're fine. You'll, you'll get to travel. It'll you know, everybody wants normal to come back. I think the message to everybody, like on the whole planet, this has nothing to do with race, creed, color, religion, country, nationality is like, you know, you need to make your normal. You create your normal is the message. You know, if somebody's going to create COVID so that they can force a vaccine on everybody, which is an opinion, then you know, it's, it's even that much louder to me how people need to really be discerning. And I'm not speaking about being an anti-vaxxer. That's also a concept um, and a, 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 a group mentality. It's not anti-vaxxer. It's, it's pro-consciousness, pro pro-acknowledging um, the multidimensional nature 
of human being. It's, it's pro acknowledging the fact that every human is a creator. And if we as a group allowed COVID as a creation that's worldwide and the vaccine as another reality, then like that's something that <clears throat> everybody agreed to play act. It's like, it's like, it's like a pantomime that everybody agreed to play a role in this pantomime, COVID and the vaccine. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. Exactly. <laughs> what I got. What I got for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, your YouTube channel. Now I tried to find that and I haven't been able to. Well, I can, if you like, share my screen and show you. Like most people wait for the host to ask them, but I'm shameless and I just want to um, show you some of my artwork first, like if that's okay. Sure. So I'm going to, I think, I don't know if you can go up to the top left and I don't know how you edit view shot chat window. Can you, you have to enable screen sharing i don't know where to do that actually let's just not do that what i i would recommend just send the link to your uh youtube channel to my email or you know what how about yeah. this um, because then then i could go on there and i could subscribe that's what it is Oh, there we go. Right. So if you go to YouTube and put that in, you'll find it. Nothing else there that's spelled like that. Okay. And when I was actually toying with um, how to spell frequency, riding the frequency is the name of the concept. Mm -hmm. Based on the idea that if we're all vibratory beings and we're all made out of energy and um, the different dimensional aspects of space, time, time, space, and what all this is um, are visible through different frequencies, like as many notes as there are on a scale, then chords, all these sonic sounds. It's the same as as many colors as you can get out of a rainbow, um, as many notes as there are, as many grains of sand as there are. Like it's all, there's a spectrum, dimensional, there's spectrum, you know? Um, when, when they see an autistic person, they call it on the spectrum, spectrum of what, like, you know, I never asked that spectrum of what you guys autistic on the spectrum. Fine. So like, as you see a theme coming, like it's all, we're riding a frequency and depending on what frequency you're in, that's what you're going to be aware of. But that doesn't mean you can't shift frequencies and be aware of something else. This is the game. Right. So in some of my um look they're coming they're coming for you oh god i hope <laughs> not. like literally two days in a row i've heard uh sirens and the firemen have showed up at my back door so somebody from a kiosk downstairs has been calling 911 and saying that there's a fire at 220 west 93rd street apartment 15b but I think it happens around uh, like 3, 3.30 my time. So we're early yet. Let's see if it happens again today. Like I, it's just, you know, the first time they knocked on the door gong, 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 and I was on a Zoom meeting. I screamed. I screamed like horror movie scream, scream. <laughs> like, and they were like, what's wrong? I was like, I don't know. And I thought it was the super just being fucked up and funny. Like, but who does that? So like I answer the back door, I'm like, you scared me, like all familiar. And then I see this fireman, like, like you're not the super. He's like, no, there's a fire. I'm like, no, there's no fire. I'm on a Zoom meeting, see? And you just basically scared the shit out of me. Thank you. 
and your adrenaline is running like cuckoo because I can feel you right now and I really would love it if you could just take a breath because I'm feeling very squirrely from off of your vibe right now you know and like the fireman like next to him just kind of looked at me raised his eyebrows and kind of went <laughs> like that like he understood what the fuck I was saying then there were a couple others down there and then another one like coming through so a bunch of them came up fast forward to yesterday I'm sitting here at my computer updating my YouTube channel. I hear a pounding on the door. Wait, and what's really crazy is I heard sirens before that. And I was like, yeah, wouldn't that be something? Had a little swig of my coffee. Are you fucking kidding me right now? So I go to the back door and I'm like, half thinking it, no, no, come on. And there they were again. And I turned to the one guy, I was like, I remember you from the dryer fire, how are you? And they're looking at me like I'm nuts. I'm like, oh yeah, is this gonna be a daily thing? Cause I'll have coffee and donuts next time. You know, oh wait, no, never mind. that's the cops. I said, do you guys any need pee or like water? You guys need anything, you guys good? And they're like, yeah. I was like, who's the one fireman? Cause like three, three different fire houses answered like when we actually had the fire. Mm -hmm. And one of the guys came in because he saw the birds. He's like, do you mind if I come in and see your birds? I'm like, no, but you got to take your shoes off. <laughs> so he did. He takes his shoes off and he comes in. I'm like, you got to take your coat off too because they're going to freak out. So he takes his coat and he comes in. He's like, I have an African gray named chicken. <laughs> it's just like, like, wait, what? So like, you can't make this shit up. So he's in there making friends with my bird and guys are just like, okay, come on. Like, we got to go now. <laughs> Like we're done our paperwork. Did they find the guy that was making the calls? Well, I'll get to that. Um, <laughs> so I asked, uh, I was like, I remember you because you're like eight feet tall, dude. Like, how are you? And how's the guy who was chicken? He's like, oh, he, he retired a couple of years ago. And like with all this consciousness stuff, like, do you think I know today I woke up? Is it Wednesday? Is it Tuesday? I know I'm supposed to talk to, um, to Python's paradise, but like, I, I don't, I don't like I, what day, like, I, I, I don't care what day it is. I know when she's hungry, I feed her. I know when I'm hungry, I feed myself. I know when I'm tired, I go to sleep. I don't work by a clock anymore except for yoga class or some other appointment that I might or might not have in muggle world where a clock is important or at least like coordination points so that people are not in, you know. Oh, I missed you. Not working. Anyway, so um, I asked him, chicken, the chicken guy. He's like, oh, he retired. A couple of years ago, I thought, wow, it's actually been that long. Well, hopefully I don't see you tomorrow. And like, where are these calls coming from? Because you can look at all of my million devices here. Nobody's pushing buttons at 911. Nobody did it yesterday. Nobody did it today. He said, it's coming from a kiosk downstairs. I said, well, he's like, do you have any enemies? I said, only the landlord. <laughs> Who fucking hates my mom because it's a fifteen thousand dollar a month event here in this apartment, and he's only getting like twenty nine ninety five. <laughs> so they hate us. You know the Goldstein family and Samson Management in Queens, Rego Park, New York. You know these guys are uh, they're terrorists. Like on the outside, they have the Arlene and. Arnold uh, Goldstein Foundation that donates $1.5 million to medical research and it helps all of these, um, oh, uh, uh, I guess, uh, what do you call, uh, like 501c3s that are there to help the Jewish community. So they give money to those, like their 501c3 donates to like the Jewish community center or that kind of stuff, you know. But, you know, my, my mom, who happens to be of Jewish descent, and in her 90s, the same people who do all of those things out in the world are causing her to go chase her roommates from 2008 to find out how much money they made because collectively in the apartment in 2008 and 2009, they wanna make sure that nobody collectively made more than $200,000 because if that's the case, they can deregulate her rent and charge her $10,000 a month automatically, retroactively to the, like, so that's not legal harassment. Okay. These guys terrorized my mother. 
and their Samson management claiming to be Samson management, I went and did some research and Arnold Goldstein founded Samson management. So Samson management is the Goldsteins. So when I used to say like Samson, man, you're just like minions. It's like, no, it's worse than that. They're not minions. They are the Goldsteins. So these guys are actively terrorizing tenants on the schneid and look so shiny, rosy, happy, nice. We're so nice to the Jewish community and the medical community. Like that, that needs to be exposed because just like my mother's condition, I cannot describe how their behavior aggravated it to the point where that was partly the reason I had to cause a mental, emotional, psychological, and physical trauma on my husband and drop my life in LA like a hot potato to come protect my mom from these fuckers. So they are on a list of people that need to be dealt with um, in a mercenary, factual, very direct, this kind of tone in my voice, like dragnet, just stating the facts, ma'am. And yeah, my mom's that guy. She's got all the letters from all of the landlords, successive landlords back and forth and file cabinets. And I could sit here with a friend, if I could get a friend to come over and do it, and three hole punch and put in all of my, I don't know if you can see over here, up there, there are a bunch of three hole binders. I've yeah. got of those left over from, I don't even know what, something told me don't throw them away. So like I can go through every single uh, document that was landlord apartment related from 1979 when we moved in here to present mm -hmm. and just hand those boxes over to any attorney and just say, sick them. Remedy and relieve this situation. You want me to leave this apartment? It's gonna cost you money. You're okay with the apartment staying rent stabilized and getting a quarter of market value for it for we live a long time. I'm only 55, she's 98. It's up to I you. I thought you were 39. All women are 39. No? You're 39. I'm something. You're something. <laughs> <laughs> I am eternal. I am always, and I'm right now. Do do so do some uh, uh, porno uh, Snow White. Oh God! I used to uh, <laughs> Snow White. Wait, hold on a second. Hold on, hold on. Here, I'm gonna. What can I do? Oh, I know what I can do. Uh, uh, I know what I can do, I think. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you thinking? <laughs> I'm trying to the view gallery full screen. I'm trying to figure out how to put a virtual background on. I don't know anything about that. That's OK. You don't have to. Um, clearly, this is this is Leanne's focused on trying to get something done. Look. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. It gets better. Oh, I don't have the glasses I like. I'm not gonna put the ones I see on. I don't like those. I'd rather squint. You know, this squint right here. It doubles yeah. up when my kids were doing shit that I didn't like. <laughs> and I'd be like, um, could you just stop, like? La 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 la. What are you doing? I told you not like it went from squint to poppy with the finger. If I had children to raise now, it would be so, so different. <laughs> so different. Okay, well, I can't figure out how to change my virtual background. Like, this is so poopy right now. I can always do it. I seem to be able to do it in the other Zoom meetings. Okay, well, whatever. Here, look at my tambourine for a minute. Sure. Do you look at my tambourine? <laughs> you, 
Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> What is Leanne doing? Leanne has gone off to find a tambourine. Well, I'll just show off the 16 Candles Blu-ray while I'm waiting for her to come back. And I've got two different versions of this, and then now you got the Criterion version that's out, but and I love Criteria, but I don't see anything really on there for extras I haven't seen before. Who knows? There should be pictures of Leanne on this, and I don't. I see Molly, Molly Ringwald, but I don't see Leanne. Leanne should be on here everywhere because she was the one that was passing the notes in class and getting... Uh, everybody into trouble <laughs> when those notes landed into the wrong hands. <laughs> yeah, 16 candles. You know what? I can't, here, I'll show you this. Ah, plant. It's, 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 has anybody in the audience ever bothered taking an apple seed, sprouting it and putting it in dirt? I have like 12, 12 of these. I've been growing. That's the other thing I've been doing. <laughs> growing plants. You I go growing them. apples, Ray Area? I'm growing apples, several apple trees, um, a couple of grapefruits, a couple of oranges, mostly grapefruits. Um, I've got peppers that I planted from the grocery store. See, and look at I can hide. Now I can be like, go across. Yeah, the but what are you going to do when they get bigger? then I'll be able to hide more of my body when it's just the mysterious plant that's walking across the room. You can't see me now, see? <laughs> what, Leanne? She looks just like an apple tree. <laughs> no. All right, like, I don't know. That was a major fail because I literally, to be honest with everybody, I completely derailed myself after trying to figure out how to change the thing. Mm -hmm. Hold time more interesting. And then I forgot what I went to go do. Because... <laughs> <laughs> We talking about before i derailed myself you were gonna get a tambourine no the tambourine's up there okay maybe i lost thought somewhere yeah, above your off. head like a, it looks like it looks like a halo it does not i did that on purpose <laughs> green head. look it's like hey arnold like i could just draw a face in there you see, if it's above your head, we all thought you were an angel yes, anyway. Laundry. See, Leanne has dirty laundry and she's not afraid to air it out. Here, actually, technically, it's clean laundry, but I can still hear. Here, now you can, now somebody can say Leanne airs out her laundry in public. Okay. There you go. <laughs> it's all over with now. You want to talk shit about me? There you go. I did it first. Ha <laughs> ha. Now what are you going to do? See? That's right. <laughs> One of the fabulous things about acknowledging what's fucked up about you and loving it and embracing it is that nobody can ever accuse you if you wear it on your sleeve. And ta -ha. you don't have any sleeves. No, but I've got hairy armpits. <laughs> I'm French. Ah, je suis française. Give me a muscle pose. <sighs> there you go. <laughs> Taekwondo. No, but I've always been like muscular in the, like, even when I was younger, I used to figure skate when I was little and then I took Taekwondo in my adulthood. Um, and now it's recumbent bike yoga. Recumbent yeah. Yoga. Because that's what we do in a bubble. Recumbent bike and yoga. <laughs> Me, I work, come home with, see my kitty. <laughs> see, I wish I had a kitty right now. I miss my kitty a lot. I miss my kitty a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah, but would kitty get along with the birds? Oh, that kitty does. That kitty lets birds crawl on her, and she'll just turn around and look, and then she'll look back at me like, "Really, mom? What are you doing?" See, I see your bird under that chair over there. <laughs> She's banging. That's this is. She likes to bang her beak. What are you doing, Beaver Bird? <laughs> bird. <laughs> Hi. Bonjour. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, bird. What are you doing? Wow. Well, you meowing? Hmm? 
Do you ever stay in touch with anybody from 16 Candles? 16 Candles. Michael Hall every once in a while. He's oh. going to be in Halloween uh, Kills. Good. Yeah. I, I, th I think he's going to be well cast in that. I mean, if, if Instagram and what one puts out on Instagram is actually any um, gauge social media is a gauge of anything but what you want to show <laughs> but what he wants to show is that he seems very um satisfied and happy in his life right now and in in perpetual gratitude his posts always smack of gratitude and appreciation which is really nice you know i like anthony michael hall right like we were all really kind of tortured teenagers for different reasons um you know yeah but it's nice when, when you can look back and, and sort of have been on your own hero's journey to overcome your self, you know, a little bit. And I think he's done a fabulous job and he's still he's still out there doing his thing. So I'm really that's nice. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing him in Halloween Kills. Because <laughs> he was a staple in all those like Sixteen Candles, Breakfast Club, Weird Science, <laughs> National Lampoon's Vacation. All of my friends were doing like projects like that. Hillary Swank won Mars or like uh, Travelers or Space Force. I like that. I laughed so hard. I love John Malkovich in that. Oh, yeah. I loved John Malkovich in Space Force. Oh, my God. I had to like rewind and watch so many times because I just laughed over the next few lines so many times. It's so absurd. It's ridiculous. It's the most absurd like whoever wrote the scripts for Space Force clearly watches the same Gaia shows and conspiracy theory shit that I do because they've taken it and transformed it into more slow drip disclosure, but making fun of all of it. So it just makes me really happy. Let's see what they do with season two. I hope there's a season two of Space Force. Are you still in touch with uh, Corey Feldman? Um, you know, there's a fella named Jake Perry, who's doing a project about Corey, and I, he interviewed me. I don't know when that's coming out or what he's doing with that, but he interviewed me for that. So I don't really have any direct contact with Corey exactly. But funny that a woman named Caroline Corey had Corey Feldman in her film uh, Superhuman. I don't know if you're familiar with that. No, he's in 13 Fanboy, and I'm part of that. Oh, well, I don't know what that is. Superhuman, of course, goes back into dealing with, you know, what we're able to do. Like, in, with consciousness and psychic stuff, and that that's more of our natural state than not being one. Anyway, so what's uh, what's what's the project you're talking about that you're a part of? 13 Fanboy is, uh, well, Corey Feldman was in Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Okay. And... Um, Debbie Sue Voorhees, who's in the fifth movie, is make it and make actually it's all shot. She managed to get it all finished before the pandemic. So it's in post production, but it's about a crazed fan that's going after alumni from the series. And um, I got on it, the Indiegogo, I got on as a co producer. Oh, that's awesome. And my picture is going to be in a scene with Tracy Savage, which is awesome. And I'm told that oh my, my picture's going to get drenched in blood. Oh, there's a picture of Greg in the corner in this scene on the deck. Like, okay. <laughs> well, apparently I get dr my picture gets uh, drenched in blood as well. So I'm like, okay. Well, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. I've interviewed a lot of people from it, you know. How do you feel about me? I throw blood in your face. Yeah. So um you'll make a big splash. I'm kidding. Yeah. So Corey Feldman is uh appearing in that. So but uh and I and I didn't even have to leave here to do it, you know. I just contributed and I've never been to the States before, so you're not missing anything. No. This place is so jacked up. I'm you know, looking forward to getting back to the convention scene again. I miss the conventions. That makes sense. Like people who are convention, convention people, like I can understand that there's, there's 
missing of that uh, environment being available. Mm -hmm. Chiller, like Kevin, Clement, all those guys, which I'm sure all of the uh, promoters and people who own the shows have definitely had to um, figure something out. Like, how many uh, on uh, how many um, conventions have you done? Did you, did you get to do very many? No, just a handful. I've done Chiller one time, and it was last minute because I happened to be in New York. Um, I did the very first one I did was called Cult Fiction, and that was in Jacksonville. Okay. And I did like like I think it was like Mini Monster Palooza. I had a little table. Then there was another one called the LA something that was at LAX that they do like three times a year. I did that once. Okay. Um, then they flew me to Orlando to do Spooky Empire. Okay. I've heard of that one. Yeah. Spooky Empire. Um, and Chiller is actually a big one. Um, but the, it's fun. You know, you get to talk to people and I just get to be kooky and just like let it all out. I've done Horrorama three times in Toronto, and I did one Comic Con in Toronto, and they're a lot of fun. I love the Horrorama one because it's uh, smaller, and you got more time with the guest and whatnot. And uh, um, yeah, so I enjoy them a lot. I was invited to my first one uh, by Lisa Langwa from the movie class of 1984 whom I'm still in touch with. So that was what started it for me. And I got the buzz from that. That's, <laughs> it's a lot of fun going to those. The atmosphere is, is great. And um, I'm looking forward. We're supposed, Horrorama is supposed to be this fall, October 2nd and 3rd, but knock on wood. Because last year, of course, it didn't happen and I didn't even take time off from work last year. It was like, what's the point? You know, I yeah, spend time. Good news. By the time you get there, you'll have a nice little stash collected and you'll have like, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of options because you'll be able to afford whatever the hell you want. Like, because you skipped a year or two because COVID. So it'll be, well, more, maybe it'll be more fun. Rent and stuff kind of goes into my stash, but. Uh -oh. That's, you know, food. Food, yeah. Water. We like yeah. it. Yeah. Well, Wi Fi I, signals, you know, it's. I just got hit hard on carb, uh, getting my car fixed. And I was like, oh my goodness, you know, and that was fun. Well, Not. <laughs> but um, no, I look forward to uh, doing that. Now, when you do do the cons, um, what's the atmosphere like for you personally there is it uh is it crazy like and i don't mean crazy negative but uh no, i like i i i bring my own part like like i said you know it's like the bubble i live in it comes with me wherever i go <laughs> so like wherever i am like wh wherever i go there i am kind of so like i don't really change much like i'm just i'm i'm always me you know and i always try to have fun and like, so I, I don't know, like even what could be considered a negative experience because people say, wow, you didn't like, I've seen people make $10,000 and I'm sorry, your weekend wasn't much better than, it's like, dude, I've got like a thousand dollars in my pocket, cash, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, I don't care. There's never a bad time to have, even if you're a millionaire, oh, I just made a thousand dollars cash. I'm going to put it in my pocket. Like, hello, what the, fuck? I'm sorry you're sorry. I'm not. I had fun. I got to just bounce around and just bleh, like, you know, like what? I got to meet Linda Blair. Talk to people. You got to meet Linda Blair? Yeah. I haven't had her on here yet. I'd like to get her on here. She's very advocate, animal advocate. She's so uh, yep. harsh animal advocate like i want to get her on here while she's eating green split pea soup yeah <laughs> like that's what supports her animal advocacy is the fact that she puked green split pea soup so i guess we have to be grateful for that like but i know that her focus is on um advocating for 
um, things that would not normally be able to advocate for themselves, you know, like innocent creatures who don't speak English who are getting abused by human beings who are just chaotic because they're they're in here. They're in here just doing unconscious whatever because whatever when they're sixty to seventy thousand whatever the fuck they're doing. Like, mm -hmm. here. So we need to protect creatures from this kind of chaotic human, you know. Do you ever see any of the other uh, sixteen candles people at these events? Like, has there been a panel or something for that? Oh, or critters too. I've had critters too. Uh huh. Critters too centrifugal more than anything or just me on my own um and then when jim dotton was at chiller you know like he was at his table and actually if i had thought of it i would have said you know like maybe we should like come visit each other's table and i'll bring some girlfriend from hell pictures and we can both sign them like but I don't know that it would have been reciprocal because I don't think he's got any girlfriend from hell photos. But like, if, if conventions ever happen and we're at the same one again, it's a thought. Thanks, thanks for, thank you for letting me think that one through. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> so what projects do you have coming up? You got anything film related that you're working on? I'm developing a bunch of stuff that probably won't see the light of day for at least a decade. Like, so I can't really say like it would be one of those things where you hear me talking about it for 10 years before it actually happens. But like, it's my intention to take a chunk of my mom's experience, mm -hmm. which is of interest and carries very many universally um, um, identifiable um, themes within it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I would like to do something to honor her. Um, I've got, um, several of her songs, her copyrights, which she uh, is in the process or we're in the process of getting back in some kind of order so that starting in 2022 is my goal. I'll be able to say I have a niche publishing company um, and music licensing entity um, where like if you were making a movie and wanted a song from the 1950s, um, you would come to me and I would be able to either give you uh, a version that sounds just like the thing that was created in 1956 so that it's a one-stop shop. Or if you had more of a budget, what would happen is that you would come to me and I would go to BMG or whatever other Warner, whoever owns the master. So I own the copyright, they own the master. And there would be a deal with both of us where we would um, do a sync license and a mechanical right publishing license. And they would get half and I would get half and then the writers would get whatever they get. And that's that. So that's how that works. And you could call it driving Miss Paulette. God. <laughs> <laughs> For it but like you know it's it's definitely interesting you know not too many 20 something year olds just like when did she leave she left in 1940 47 48 i still have i still have like her little black books from 1947 like and it's at a glance that company's been around for a long time the at a glance company <laughs> like from the 1930s 1940s i have this little at a glance like and i see her like go to william morris uh, go to Django's hotel room, um, audition for the boyfriend. Like I see all of this stuff, like Stella Adler's class, like all of these, like she kept all of her appointments and kept all of these books, man. So I can recreate in a timeline where she was and what she was doing and use what she's told me, the stories she's told me my whole life, along with her little black book, along with a little something called Google, and research and verify, but this all takes a long time. So I can verify the time, place and put the timeline together. Then I would have to write, build around that with like dialogue and all this other stuff and all these characters that come into it, which is kind of very interesting. The, the time post-World War II Europe, a lot of jazz 
composers. A lot of Americans were in Paris um, doing their art thing, like after that, you know, my mom being one of them, she went on tour in uh, Germany for a minute. She dated a double spy, like, and I found the guy, this guy. You know, she used to tell me all these stories. Okay. Tell me all these stories about my boyfriend, Jean-Pierre, and the one time I had to take something in a newspaper and he told me like, while I'm walking down the street that I should look in the uh, windows of the stores to see like the reflection to see if anybody's following me. He told me how to make sure nobody's following me, where to sit. I sat at the bar, I put the newspaper down next to the man. I sat there and I had a drink and then I just left. Like, and that's all I was supposed to do. She remembers one time where this boyfriend of hers who had a twin, it was Jean-Pierre as his name and his, uh, his twin, mm, I think his name was Jacques. Jacques, but his nickname was Bigoudi. So Bigoudi and his wife, Olga, who made the best crepe Suzette ever. Like, I'm not making this shit up. Like, and she said it over and over. So it's not like she's changing the story with revisionist history. So they were in some kind of uh, Mr. Toad's wild ride where, you know, get down, we're being followed, herky jerky, crazy, you know, uh, like she's in Germany and he's visiting her like while she's on tour. And, you know, she finds a gun in her trunk and she's like, what the fuck is this? He's like, oh, I left that there because I needed to, you know, put it away for a while. And I just figured nobody would, oh my God, you know. And then next thing you know, she's back in France and meeting with the uh, prefecture of police because she's had all of these meals at this place, you know, this place where the typical 1950s guy with the hat and he's behind the newspaper. You know? Yep. <laughs> My mom said like every once in a while, she'd see this. <laughs> and then like that. Who makes that shit up? Nobody. So like it's this intense, rich story. And the thread is that she went to make her fame and fortune in, in Paris. She did some dude a favor. This director brought back his little dog. She ran into Django and a Rue de whatever it is that he lived on. She still remembers that, like in her dementia. The Rue de, I think I had it on tape someplace. I'll have to go through all of what I videotaped after I'm done grieving. Um, but so like, yeah, I really, I would love to, I wanted to make a movie and somebody said, that's really not a movie. I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, that's more of like a series. Like you take each year, like when she goes to France, when she's in France, this whole spy thing, then she goes to tour in Germany. Then we're at 1950, she's gotten annulled and the spy leaves because the government doesn't want them together. And this whole communist plot has been blown up. She starts dating this uh, accordionist who was in some other band that she was playing with. They go to North Africa for a year in exchange for getting tickets back to America for free because they've now helped the armed services, armed forces. So they were in North Africa for like a year, like playing for the troops in the uh, officers club, you know? Mm -hmm. And then they got married and moved back to New York, to Brooklyn with my grandma and lived on Ocean Parkway. And then that's when they met Carmen McRae singing, playing piano for herself. And that whole thing started. So she started composing music to this guy, Chuck Darwin's lyrics. Chuck's lyrics are always so pedestrian. Okay. Yet this pedestrian song was recorded by Carmen McRae two times, Bob Stewart once, uh, a woman back in 19, uh, 20, 2017, Kelly, Kelly Green recorded it. Some other band called the Elotria Jazz Band from Germany just recorded it. Not to mention in the 50s, uh, 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 Tony Quill, no, Gene Quill, Tony Scott, Bill Evans, uh, 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 Kenny Burrell, Ronnell Bright, um, Paul Quinchette. There are so many versions of my mom's song. It's stupid. Like, so she, from a, composition and jazz standpoint is very relevant and like at that same time when she was back from Europe she was also running in the boyfriend on Broadway with Millicent Martin and Julie Andrews and you know so my mom's had like kind of a fun time so it's really kind of like a marvelous Mrs. Maisel but hers is more of an introverted uh girl just trying to discovering the world like 
and herself uh, over a span of like four years when this major stuff like was going on. Like that's a lot for a young lady to go through, you know? So I thought the sirens were coming after you again. <laughs> like I know there's a difference between that kind of a siren. That was an ambulance. The, the fire engines are different. If I hear the fire engines, I will tell you it's happening again because there are the fire engines. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it doesn't. Like, and I hope, like, and when I asked the guy yesterday, I was like, dude, what, where? He said, it's coming from a kiosk. I was like, well, are you, what's going on? <laughs> like, he's like, oh no, the marshal's looking into it. I'm like, well, that's nice. Cause I'd like to press charges for fucking harassment. Thank you. Yeah. Cause they're <laughs> harassing me in the process. And not only is this like, and, and my, my, my guy in Detroit, super Dick, super Dick. I talked to super Dick about many different things, but super Dick was saying yesterday, uh, that, um, uh, that's what these fire bugs do. And when they call things in, they'll count the stories in a building and they'll send them to the highest possible level. Because when they do that, they have to pull out the most expensive trucks. They have to send a lot of firemen because they have to go up that many flights. So it's a several, like a five figure event. You know, I'm not saying that somebody on the second floor would be a cheaper event, but there's definitely more uh, excitement when it's a high floor, pretty sure. Like, and whether whoever's calling from the kiosk knows that there's an old woman in this apartment. Like, so whether it's somebody who knows us or whether somebody who's just got it out for the city just to, 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 to make these people spend like taxpayer money and so that Manhattan can bleed out a little more so that the politicians and their billion trillion dollar, I'm gonna fix the fucking, you know, and here we have these asshats draining the swamp like okay like this is just like a lot of people would be freaked out right now and i'm just kind of like my eyebrows are raised and i just kind of think okay how can we find this person and just like kind of i don't know put like a positive and a negative on each of his nipples and then just go and go because <laughs> you like to do that so i guess you like it getting dented. Ah, ah. Yeah. Not enough to give him a heart attack, just a little. Do you ever see, have you, have you seen uh, Molly Ringwald since 16 Candles or do you avoid her? I was say, have you ever seen Molly Ringwald tied up to a car battery like that? No, I have not. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen her compromised in such a manner. <laughs> I have seen her once. I saw her. I went to go see her sing at uh, at a hotel in Santa Monica, and I brought my daughter with me. And she looked at me and kind of cocked her head to the side and went, "Are you Leanne?" And I kind of went, "Yeah, how are you?" And it was kind of like weird. And then it was over. And then we left. She didn't yeah. hand you a note uh, that you were supposed to pass back and you fell asleep? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not an optic visual that I'd like. Me falling asleep at Molly Ringwald's concert. <laughs> that would be that would be rude. Is she a good singer? I never heard her sing before. She's a very competent uh, performer. It's genetic. There you go. You need to do some, uh, and I asked you this earlier, some Snow White. <laughs> I love that look. That's what I went to go get. Please hold. Okay, we're going to see Leanne be Snow White. We haven't seen this version of Snow White in the Seven Dwarfs. Ever, and this is the best version, despite it being the very first Disney animation. Leanne is going to warp it, she is going to make it her own. <laughs> She's going off to get this, and of course, I've heard her do this before with her mom, and uh, this is priceless. So, looking forward. <laughs> 
if I recall correctly, I think I saw Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs at the drive-in, which is something we haven't had here in a long time. What, the Disney oh, version? No, uh, drive-in theaters. I think we saw Snow White at uh, drive-in theater on a re-release. You know, that was the very first Disney film, Disney animation, I should say. Really? Yep, 1937, yep. Full-length feature? Yep, for uh, dis the animation, yep. Yep. Huh. <laughs> yeah, it's going to take a second. This is fun, right? Watching the top of my head. Like, I actually went online. Mm -hmm. and I did an extensive search. Like, you know, I, 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 I research stuff. And mm -hmm. I went on eBay, and I went on Etsy, and I went on all of these sites. And um, I finally decided that uh, that it would be in my interest to give somebody a little business. And um, <laughs> I know, maybe a little business. Like people do put up a lot of arts and crafts on Etsy. Have you ever noticed that? Do you ever go shopping on Etsy? You know, you're not a not really, no. Yeah. People so, have their little stores and, and people buy stuff. And I hope I can just get this done really like <laughs> in a minute. <laughs> Is this how you entertain your mom? Yeah, I just talk to her and talk to her about Etsy because because I can. Um, I have two more, one more. I don't think I can do this because I'm out of, my fingers aren't working now and you'll understand why in just a minute. Like, okay, so. <laughs> and the Seven Dwarfs. <laughs> By Leanne Curtis. Once upon a time, there was a princess Name's Snow White. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> she was fucked up. <laughs> First of all, she was in love with three and a half men. <laughs> there they are, all cut in half and then the extra. He's grumpy because he's all by himself like the Limburger cheese standing alone. <laughs> Not only did she love three and a half men, but she kept talking smack about this lady. <laughs> How rude is that? This lady is a nice lady. She gave her three hot and a cut, and the nice huntsman, he took her out to the woods off leash. <laughs> what more do you want? But no, that's not enough for Snow White. She's got to go run away from the huntsman who's got to go back and tell some terrible story to the nice lady because mirror, mirror on the wall, I don't want to hear this because then I'm going to have to make this guy go and torture the girl because she talks smack about me and then no so the huntsman because really he gets queasy easy he let her go next thing you know she's talking to birds and squirrels and chipmunks that's not okay this is <laughs> illegal in at least 40 states okay that's no good we don't talk to the little animals. Then they haul us away, you know, unless we meet the nice little mans. Then they take us in and indenture us to clean their crappy house full of dust and crap. But you know, the one good thing about these mans is their height. So kind of it pays off. Shh, it's not that kind of movie. Anyway, this lady, she one day 
decided to turn herself into a fair young maiden, but that didn't work so hot. So she went back to crony and went with some apples to Snow White, who said, oh yeah, I got the munchies. I'm gonna eat this apple. And she went like that, hey, and that, and then Grumpy said, this is a tremendous disaster. Just like Trumpy. Oh! <laughs> hey, the house did not come down, it's safe. They put her in a glass box, and next thing you know, clippity clappity clippity clappity clippity clappity, it's the prince. He's on his horse, he sees the girl and says, wow, you know, I've been asking myself a question for a very long time. And I think I can answer this, but only if I touch my lips to the girl's lips, then I will know for sure what I am. So he gets off the horse, goes to the glass, box starts kissing snow white then she <coughs> and then the apple in his face and he's like that's disgusting she <laughs> said i'm sorry i spit the apple he said no that's fine kissing a girl that's disgusting i'm definitely gay where's that huntsman so all the little mans was happy because they got their little slave back he went ran away with the huntsman's and she sold apple pies for the rest of her life. The end. <laughs> they all lived happily. They did. They followed their bliss. Great. So That's now I've got a recorded version of Snow White. I can show it to my mom if you send me this fucking Zoom. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that I've told it online in a story from beginning to end for all the world to see as she told me she told me that i had to do that she ordered me to do that <laughs> so now now i've act actually I, I did something on her bucket list for me to do before she croaks i did it i did it thank you for facilitating that i'm so sorry yes for the audience <laughs> oh i love it this is gonna have to be a part one and part two it's like, it's like two o'clock now no it'll be the whole thing that's awful. Two hours of the end. Are you kidding me? You know what? When I go to work, I stick a, my headphones in and I listen to podcasts while I'm That's cleaning. Cool. You stick in yourself while you're at work? Yeah. Oh. But oh, I'll tell you oh, one thing. Okay. Sorry. You, 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 you're not the, the longest guest I've had on here. I had a, uh, a guy <laughs> on, on five, here. For five. That's not that long. I, I had a um, a guest on here for four hours and eight minutes back in January. <laughs> wow, that's a long time. Yeah. No, I just let my guests talk and uh, I Hanging I don't out. do a whole lot of edits. I definitely won't edit that. <laughs> so when are you going to move on to other uh, uh, Disney movies like Bambi and Cinderella and Peter Pan? <laughs> I don't know. Captain Hook's kind of sexy. <laughs> that clock just, and that alligator, you know. Just, me on. <laughs> do you do you ever tor tor torment the bird with uh, your Snow White characters? <laughs> no, no, that actually goes back into riding the frequency. I, I I caught myself talking to my birds in just sounds like like that came out kind of like what <laughs> Right. And I started doing mm -hmm. stuff like that. And then um, I, I shared that with somebody who said, that sounds like light language. I'm like, what the hell is light language? <laughs> What's that? And the person who said that to me happens to be somebody who's got a show on Gaia called Interviews with Extra Dimensionals. His name is Ruben Langdon. Mm -hmm. He's actually a stunt man. And you've seen his work in Avatar. He's, you know, he's, he's, uh, 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 you know, got, got, a good, long, healthy background in the uh, entertainment industry. Yet uh, he sort of wandered over this way into uh, 
extra dimensional consciousness. And so I started watching this show along with another one called Initiation with a guy named Matias Di Stefano. And that's when I started feeling like I need to start drawing geometry. Like I, 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 I like I, I had to draw a tesseract. I was like, what is wrong with you? I called my husband. I was like, you need to send my geometry stuff from school. I had left it in LA. It's kind of a long story, but I was like, you've got to find it. Go get it. Go get it from my, go get it from my classmate. I had left it with my elementary school teacher because she was elderly and I thought it would be nice for her to have a visual of something from one of her st students, you know, as she lay there, whatever. So after she passed away, like my classmate, Nick took it and he put it in storage. And then I started pestering. I'm like, Nick, Nick, why are you ghosting me? Nick, Nick, where's my book? Book, book, book. I want my book. And he's like, okay, calm down. Like, I've got your book. It's in storage. What? Send your husband. I said, when? He's like, Saturday. I'm like, good. Tim, Tim, you got to go see Nick. Go see Nick. Tim, Tim, go see Nick. He's like, okay, when? Like Saturday, go. So he's got my books and I still haven't received them, but I did get this big pad. Like, and this is like one of my test things that I was just screwing around with, which isn't really, I mean, that okay. was just a test, you know? And then, then I started drawing other stuff like, hmm, I don't know. I think the best way, this is why I was trying to share screen because I thought it would be good, but we can do it a different way. You're like, great. That's just great. Um, so I started drawing and like within the drawings, certain things started appearing to me and this is one of the first ones oh that looks awesome you drew that yeah like oh, but wow. I'm not, i don't do this is not what i do it is now like so that's one of the things so that was the first one and like the second one that was a face was this okay like, actually i'm gonna put it all up um and maybe sell prints of these but like little by little, like first, I mean, she's the face on riding the frequency. This guy started out as what looked to be like an African-American guy, but then that's not what came out like at all here. This is better at the actual drawing here. Okay. So, and then somebody was like, Leanne, those are your eyes. Like, and I thought, holy shit, kind of hung. But there's always geometry involved. See that flower of life pattern starting there? With all the yeah. stuff like that? So everything I do has some kind of geometry involved. Like, and like this guy, like not so much geometry, but like the background, there's like a frame with a picture in the background. Um, and in that picture, there's a, a triangle. Like, so there's always some kind of, and who knows, like, this is like, everybody's like, oh, that's your, sh the shape of water guy. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> sort of, maybe, you know, and that one. Okay. So I've got like a lot of these drawings. Like, and I feel like when I'm channeling, like, cause that's a thing. Like something compelled me to put, like in her third eye, I decided to put like glittery nail polish. And then when I was talking to a friend of mine, I said, I feel like, like the word Lyra keeps coming to my head. They're like, yeah, well, maybe one of your off planet people are from Lyra. I said, yeah, it's like, well, what about blue people? What color eyes do these blue aliens supposed to have? And they said, well, very purple and flecked purple. I'm like going, oh shit. Here I am drawing this blue woman with purple flecked eyes with orbs all around her, like, so <clears throat> I couldn't tell you, except to say from my higher aspects of myself, where the shit comes from, but it's just something that has to happen. And for the most part, when I draw this stuff, it's not even in a room that's like bright light. It's always been like late at night or maybe early in the morning when the shades are still drawn, it's kind of dark. Like, so it's not like I'm preconceived, I'm gonna draw this line. It just, my hand just does this shit. Like, and it corrects itself. Like when I say, like I see something and it doesn't feel right, it's not the right shape. Like this clearly is not supposed to be an African-American guy. 
Like I can show you what it started mm-hmm. out. Like. It was a bald dude. Actually, before that, it started out with like long, ringy, ringy hair. Like you can't, you can still sort of see the golden hair. But now I think that what that golden hair is, is an energy field. Like, so I say these things now. I use these terms, energy field. Like I never talked like that before. So I think, you know, back to full circle, what did COVID do to Leanne? I draw made her more creative. Yeah, pretty much. It it opened up. It opened up. uh, It opened up a flow for sure from the ethers. You know. Speaking of ethers and flow, my mom. I hear her. I'm gonna have to go tend to the carcass because I feel like it needs to make its ablutions, and I would rather not clean up a mess. Send Snow White and the dwarfs in there. I wish I had some Snow White and some dwarfs, but maybe one day, maybe, maybe you I'll go work. draw pictures of your mom. I actually did draw a picture of her. Um, it just, that was also done in the dark. Like this is one of my scratch papers. Like, and there's another face coming out of there and I don't know. Okay. That's like that's how it happens. I, I draw stuff and then other stuff comes out that has nothing to do seemingly with what it started out to be, which is always like another one of my scratch papers. The bird ate it. I'd <laughs> um, love to find a picture of my mom for you. There it is. That's what I started drawing of my mom. Oh, there you go. Which looks very much like her. It definitely has her essence. <laughs> so maybe I'll finish it at some point. That's her on her pillow. There you go. Well, before I let you go, I'd love for you to do a plug for my show. Sure. I thank you so much for coming on here. I'm, it's a delight. You look great, by the way. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, do plug for my show. All right. Hi, my name is Leanne Curtis, and you are listening to Python's Paradise. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what? I'll, I'll be in touch. You know, um, I don't see you on Facebook. Is there anything wrong with your Facebook account? Uh, I have two. One I never go on ever, ever, ever. And the other one I go on every once in a while just to check comments and stuff. But I, I'm less active on Facebook as I am more active in my bubble. Um, okay. But I think once I start doing my interviews for Riding the Frequency, um, like one of my first interviews, hopefully I can get it done before his book launch, Alan Steinfeld. He's got a book called Making Contact that's coming out on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't know if this is going to come out before May 4th, but wherever or whenever it comes out, go find that book. Alan's awesome. Alan is awesome. So if you guys are interested in any kind of like uh, mm, UFO contact, alien and or consciousness driven material, Alan Steinfeld is somebody who is a go-to and also um, Portal to Ascension is another really good website full of uh, pre-recorded events, 3,000 hours worth. It's a lot. So there's your COVID party right there. Go online check out all of the fabulous information that we don't get in school on the news or anywhere else. So that's that. Public well, service. folks, well, folks, check out Leanne Curtis and 16 Candles, Girlfriend from Hell and various other films. And don't and- forget to go to my YouTube writing the frequency and subscribe and listen to my light language. Yes. I got to subscribe to that because I want to check that out. Watch you. My light language. It's light language and it comes through me. I'm just a conduit. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I'll let you go check check on your mom. Um, I hope that uh, she's doing okay and I'm delighted so, to have you back on here. You're always wonderful to talk it was to. My distinct pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me back multiple times. It's always fun to talk to you. I appreciate you very much and all the stuff that you do. I'll have you back again. You're <laughs> you're never boring. Threats and promises. <laughs> Threats and promises. You'll you'll have to work on the next Disney puppet show. <laughs> it's gonna be like Rumple Stillskin or the Troll Under the Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> well, Leanne, God bless you. Thank you so much for coming on. 
And I wish you know what? blessings back to you and your brother and your parents. Like, yes, I, I like I send them all a lot of loving, healing energy and light. Like, your family for sure. So Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, uh, blessings to you and your mom. S keep entertaining us. You, you are the most entertaining <laughs> guests I've ever had. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad, but. I'll keep doing it because I really can't be anything else. Like, <laughs> I gotta be me. <laughs> I just feel you know, like I, I don't know who else I could be. So. There you go. <laughs> well, you take care. You have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Keep your mom safe. And uh, yep, God bless and stay positive. I will do that. And you follow your bliss. You guys be well over there. Stay warm. Absolutely. Enjoy springtime. Absolutely. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.